In less than 24 hours, the biggest news of 2024 will happen. Will the Federal Reserve cut 25 or 50 basis points? But one thing's for sure, the markets are now synchronized perfectly as we suspected leading into the event with the Nasdaq, S&P 500 and now Russell 2000 all joining in at key resistance zones. But can we kind of get some information about what happened leading into this point? And more importantly, have we ever seen rate cuts at all time highs? Well, the answer is simply yes. And in today's video, we need to take a look at the data surrounding these particular events. So join us as we cover stocks commodities and cryptos in one of the most volatile periods that we're going to see for the year. Well, welcome back everyone to The Daily Show. My name's Tom and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at everything from the macro to the lead indicators and of course the hottest charts leading into this massive event, which is the Federal Reserve's interest rate cut. But before the FOMC event, I thought I'd just quickly read a quick quote. And that quote says, the stock market will do whatever it has to to embarrass the greatest number of people from Walter Diemer. Now, this is posted over on our X account. Links in the description down below if you want to follow along with some charts there. But the big thing here is that we have to expect the potential of unexpected moves and more importantly, keep an open mind to what will happen over this interest rate cut. We know based on the data that we're going to show in today's video that there's a good chance that markets may experience volatility to the downside. But as we'll also show, there are still signs of growth potentially in this market, especially when we're cutting into an all-time high. And this chart may demonstrate what the market is getting into, the idea of a soft landing. 79% of expectation is now for a soft landing, 11% for a hard landing, and 7% for a no landing, one of the biggest discrepancies that we've had so far along the tracking since 2023. So why does this matter? Well, it kind of forces in some opinions that the Federal Reserve should only cut around 25 basis points. And this will become an important factor as we break down markets moving forward. But has the Fed actually cut when we've had an all-time high? Well, as we've been discussing and talking about recently, we've seen cuts in a few periods where we've had all-time highs and also near the end of the cycle, such as 1998. We had the early and mid-90s cuts. We had the cuts of 2019 and, of course, further back, the early cuts of the 1980s. And all of these actually led into mostly bullish scenarios, with 45% of the time one month later, the market being in a kangaroo that is down overall. But three months later, six months later, and 12 months later, these markets actually being very bullish. And get this, 100% of the time when we've seen this read, 12 months later, the markets were up. That is absolutely mind-blowing when you think about it. So what's going on when it comes to the breadth here in markets? Well, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and in general markets are starting to see recovery in the smaller cap stocks. We saw the Russell 2000 blitz its way up back to those resistance highs that we spoke about in the beginning of the video, and we'll look at that a little bit later on. But both the advanced decline line for the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 have been improving. And this has led into some breadth and some big thrusts that we're starting to see through the markets. We, of course, saw the Whaley Brett thrust that we bring up from time to time only a few months ago, signaling that probably markets would be up over the next 6 and 12 months if we looked at them in their entirety. We also saw a 3% decline followed by a 3% rally over the last week in the S&P 500. And what that usually brings with it is further gains. In fact, 90% of the time, three months later, markets were actually up across this board. And it has us wondering, do we need to hit a soft landing narrative before markets actually go bad? Well, remember, a lot of this market is based on what does the street actually think? What are they doing? Where are they putting the money? And are they continuing to invest into these markets? Well, we have seen a couple of little updates here, including a massive EPS increase when it comes to the Magnificent Seven. Basically, Wall Street's starting to upgrade them across the board. And this is happening at the same time that we're seeing a breakout to the upside in these particular stocks. Also, leverage seems to be kind of subdued to where it was back in 2021 before, of course, the epic sell-off of 2022. Are we super levered? Well, maybe not levered enough just yet. And this is something that we'll continue to watch through 2025. So make sure to watch as where the leverage is, 
really will be the massive concern of that particular period. This is another chart showing the S&P 500 FINRA margin debt. And you'll notice that it started to uptick here according to the charts. And this basically, again, has a very strong 12-month and 18-month correlation to do with bull market returns. Not many times were we ever negative over the next 12 months. And even when we were, it wasn't that bad. And most of those were actually in the 1930s and 1940s, which is a very long time ago. Any of the recent reads from similar points here have all been positive. So it becomes a bit of a crapshoot. That's what we actually saw as the news headline there when we were opening the video. And that's because there are some scenarios where markets are saying, you know what, things are really bad, everything's crashing and we should all be terrified. And there are some stats that are saying, you know what, we're going to climb the wall of worry. And there are some also metals that are starting to move. As you would know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, we've been very bullish on gold and utilities this year. And of course, recently silver. And silver has actually spiked after these periods in quite big ways, especially off the last two particular rate cuts being the global financial crisis and the 2019 cuts. So will it be the same? Well, ultimately, it comes down to price action. We'll look at that soon when it comes to silver, but it will need to break through that key resistance at 31.25. So now let's move over to the stats that everyone knows right now. The back end of September, often considered the two week worst weeks of the year, looks something like this. Now, of course, we know Fundstrat's Tom Lee, previous video, go check it out, where we explained all of the data statistics, believes that when we start September week, we will usually end the month overall negative. Now, that actually was 100% stat leading all the way back to the 1930s. But what things we really do know is we have to expect kangaroo markets to potentially continue here all the way through to October. And the reason really why that is, is because of the US election. Not only do we have a rate cut, not only do we have an uninversion of bond yields, not only do we have a US election, but all of these are culminating at the same time giving us the opportunity to see extreme volatility and big moves throughout markets. And you'll see here the stats that we've explained several times, and also the VIX futures term structure, which we've gone through quite a lot together. So we know that basically the street thinks a 50 basis point rate cut is coming. I personally believe that's the wrong idea in terms of if the Federal Reserve is going to lord a soft landing and claim that 50 basis points is not really sending that kind of message. So I'd like to see 25 basis points myself. But a lot of you out there, in fact, 30 to 35 percent of you believe that it is going to be a 50 basis point cut. And I guess what I'm trying to say here is it doesn't really matter what our opinion is on the cut. It matters how the market reacts and it matters what type of structure we see from the market over the next three months. And speaking of structure, we know that generally the first five and 10 days have been predominantly more negative than positive when it comes to a rate cut. That also breaks down also when we've seen rate cuts, remember, specifically at highs. And that's usually led on to a bit of a weird month, but a two, three, four, five, and six month kind of period being very, very positive across the board. S&P 500 performance structure will be key here to do with fast and slow cycles. And of course, we'll be watching that. The faster they go, the more rate cuts they do. If they did 50 basis points followed by another 50 basis points, that could certainly show us that they're freaking out underneath the hood. And the market will probably react accordingly to that. And this is something we will need to watch and we will continue to do it together on the charts as we move forward throughout 2024. When it comes to large trades that came through over the last 24 hours, the only one that's really notable is a huge transaction on the three times fund of S&P 500. And it happened right at these near highs with, of course, the market going slightly higher before and then selling back down underneath. And this will be important because, of course, what happens here over the next 24 hours will have profound implications on whether we've just set a trap, which does look like it could be there, on S&P 500 traders. A new all-time high being reached in some markets and, of course, that leading into everyone starting to FOMO in ahead of the event. In fact, I think the general sentiment is right now that the markets will probably rip higher, dump, then accumulate somewhere quickly, and then, of course, buy back up. And I tend to believe that, yes, we will probably see a dump at some point. That will freak everyone out, and that could be a very decent buying opportunity. But I think the way in which it works will be interesting for us to navigate as it is going to take advantage of basic human psychology. 
Let's move over now to the sectors that were doing well and not so well over the last 24 hours. Energy coming out again pretty well. And of course, solar now overtaking is the best five-day return on sectors as some polls are going towards the Democrats and that being probably that particular trade. Regardless of the US election though, we've got here, of course, the metals, gold, ITB, all of these types of markets coming through. And as we've talked in quite a lot of discussion, especially in our previous video, the idea that oil actually has fallen off so significantly could particularly benefit some of the big miners. Well, let's go now to the S&P 500 before we look at the options charts. First off, advanced decline line continues to be pretty strong across the board. Secondly, we saw net negative delta, which I think is important. And if you notice here, and we get rid of that chart for a moment, the markets actually went to an all time high, or at least they just kind of tapped it very, very closely. Now we spoke in our previous video about the idea that we would get towards a positive gamma push that could push even upwards of 5,700 before the event. And this was a very important factor because of course, to push this high will have some people triggered into buys. We then came back down to the most traded zone. We found some buyers coming off that and we ended up as what we call a doji candle. Now, not an exceptional doji because of course it's got a fairly big body, but effectively this is indecision right at the peak. And if we take a look at the futures market, which we'll do right now together, you'll notice that this indecision happens right into that level that we spoke about on the futures, which is the last small resistance. Notice how it taps that level and finds a sell. This proves that there is someone around here that is probably starting to place a potential bearish bet ahead of the event. And it also opens up a couple of other interesting scenarios. The first being that if we take a Fibonacci ratio of the low to the high, that it starts to now point out that there's a possibility that markets could pull all the way back down significantly to something like a 5,500 which is kind of like where we like the base here of a market if we were to sell off. Remember, it's a kangaroo style market right now. It also opens up the prospects of potentially going to a new high and then doing this later on into October. So what else do we need to be paying attention to now that we're here? Well, of course, we will be needing to pay attention to the smaller time frame structure. And right now we know this most traded zone and probably the low here, which I'll mark out, which is 5606, will probably tell us whether bulls or bears are in control of the smaller structure. The trend remains bullish. A series of higher highs and higher lows means that there's no real change here for any of us. Yes, the market's still bullish. Yes, you don't really want to necessarily go against it. But what happens if we go underneath 5606? It opens up the significant possibility of breaking down to around that 5500, 5515 zone. And as we like to do on this channel, let's take a look at the options flows together. So of course, 5640 is exactly on the positive gamma for the day. What happened? The market blitzed it in the morning, and then by the end of the day, what happened? It pulled back down. Now, why did it do that? Well, it didn't want to pay out those levels. And of course, the market wasn't prepared to go into positive gamma just yet. Over the next 24 hours, 55.55 will be the interesting put wall. 56.40, of course, again, instigating that positive gamma move. And if we do get a big close above 56.40 and that ends up happening, then that can open up, as we mentioned, 5,700. Take a look at these huge call options that are sitting on 57 and 56.40, two major levels to be looking at in the charts. Now, remember we mentioned 5,500, 5,515. Well... Take a look, where are the puts? Right sitting on that level. So we know exactly where the two big zones are. We also know that in some ways, this will be a very important week because even when we look at the end of the week, 5,500 again becomes the big strike for the puts and the bottom end. And 56.40, have a look at all the options bets into the Friday close. There's going to be a ton of positive gamma there in markets if they choose to rip higher. So if you were thinking about how would Wall Street make the most amount of money, if they are all a rights by retail traders, they probably would make the most amount of money to sell the market off. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, but you do need to kind of ask that question. And at this point, we know where some of the key technical terms or technical levels will be. And of course, we've synchronized now, including the Russell 2000, which we suspected would happen in the last video. Let's have a look at CTAs. They started to sell a little bit a couple of days ago. Interesting fact, because of course, they're doing that potentially ahead of the FOMC. Silver traders started to buy up pretty big, which again, we already suspected was happening on the charts. 
and this would make sense to, of course, rate cut scenarios being potentially bullish for that. And struggling stocks continue. Tesla failed to break and close above 230. You'll notice it did put pressure on it through the session, but it failed to get past that massive level. If this does happen and it gets past, it opens up 250. And again, these are the key levels that we've been watching now for a little while. Nvidia, on the other hand, kind of sat around in the middle of the zone, selling off a little bit. 113 still on the call, 120 the major call level, and of course 110 being where the puts are at this stage. Let's now jump over to the charts. A lot of you are pretty bullish on treasuries. In a video we'll do post FOMC event. And do remember, I chose not to put the newsletter out today, guys, because realistically tomorrow matters more. We will have a post coverage of the CPI after the market close. Links in the description, totally free newsletter. I'm going to send it out after the close before the video is produced over the next 24 hours. So make sure to sign up for that. Totally free to do so, guys. Join and make sure you get that because it's going to be good. Now, treasuries over here, you'll notice have broken out. Now, we know that there's an opportunity to 108, but in that, I'll share a chart that shows you the massive amount of leverage in treasuries right now. It is something I'm concerned about because, of course, the US dollar yen, we saw a lot of trade on that one as well in recent times that overall became so heavily geared into one direction that eventually it exploded, and we all know what that did. It caused a VIX 65-style event. The volatility of the volatility, this is the VVIX, did end up spiking through the session a little bit. The VIX itself ended up at 17.6, so it's not exactly in fear terms or anything like that, but these could spike up. I don't suggest trading the VIX here. I think it's a mistake, but we do have to expect volatility to potentially be around this event overall. The US dollar has not significantly, of course, put a weekly close underneath this 150 level, but we did see the daily continue to hold around this zone. And further selling should open up 99.50 for the US dollar. Conversely to this, we saw copper pull back a little bit after having a really nice run on it recently. I still like to see copper at 450 to 460. We'll see how it does post FOMC events. US oil synchronizing up, hitting the TP zone. Congratulations, anyone that was a bit of a day trader or a scalper to the upside. Absolutely nailed that 7150 area. And I got that alert earlier this morning. It was really cool to see the daily 20 moving average getting hit. Now, if oil does end up continuing to bounce, where are we looking at? Mean reversion would be the most likely area, which will be about 75 a barrel. So there's still possibility of further oil uptick. But of course, it did hit that massive zone right before the FOMC. And this is what markets do. They sync up to these levels. Gold's trying to put pressure on the 2600 to 2628 area. And at the moment, it's still in an upward trend. And silver's finding a little bit of TP zone. Now, one of the things interesting about silver is I put a chart in before, as we said, when we get cuts, we tend to see silver actually spike through. Now, we know that this level, 3125, is a key resistance area. And silver seems to be kind of consolidating throughout this kind of zone. So it's consolidating here. It has not broken to the upside just yet. Now, this will be a very interesting point because of course, if if silver does break out to the upside, then we could see a very quick move towards 3450. And a lot of people will say silver squeeze and all of those types of things. I think a post FOMC event silver analysis is worthy and we will check that out. But in history, we've seen very strong moves of silver post the cut, at least for the next week to two week period. Tesla overall, big rejection here off the 232 level. We know this is such an important zone. This is where the resistance is. If we break through, inverse head and shoulders is really open. 280 becomes a key level for us to look at. And of course, if we go over to the stocks themselves, Nvidia seems to be kind of like sitting in the middle of nowhere land, as does semiconductors. I would have preferred semis got to 242 ahead of the FOMC, and then potentially sold off, but that wasn't to be. The other markets synced, but semis couldn't quite get there. Because we're seeing an uptick in some metals around the world, including potentially some upticks in iron ore, copper, etc. HSI, which is the Chinese stock market we, we look at here and track, has been doing okay. Nice little uptick there across the board. The Aussie market is still trading around those highs, waiting for the FOMC event. And of course, the US 2K nailed it, everyone. Well done. 2220. Fantastic level hit over the last 24 hours. Really like that. And of course, we're going to make a big decision here. Do we end up seeing a sell based on the S&P 500 and potentially move to these two levels down here before seeing 
potential resumption of buying or are we just going to blitz it go past 2250 and then open up that next level that everyone's been looking for for a while which is of course that 2400 plus Russell 2000 could absolutely be a benefit when it comes to what happens and we do have actually a chart over on x which i'll also share in our newsletter just a quick reminder for that again uh, where it actually shows you not taking any specific levels into account which particular sectors have done well post cut so that's an interesting one uh, for you to look at as well what about the queues well the queues are at resistance you can see here trading right off that major trade zone we've lined up a few weeks ago great work this really is what should get you excited about technical analysis. When you nail levels and you nail them before time, again, it's not really necessarily a full prediction or anything. You're just nailing where you believe the largest big banks and big institutions are sitting in terms of their levels. And when you can see reactions and you see key resistance being hit ahead of an event, you realistically know that you've done a good job as a technical analyst. That's what you're seeing here on the queues. And of course, the discussion now is, are we going to see a pullback followed by potentially a rip or are we just going to see a rip followed by an October pullback and then something like this? The stats do end up lining towards overall the market still being in the bullish trend. Remember, whenever we've seen other cuts at highs, 100% of the time, 12 months later, so far, again, no stat is record and no stat is going to be absolute proof, markets have actually been up. So you could say this time is different. Maybe it is, but it's certainly something interesting to look out forward to. Let's now have a look at Bitcoin. Great move. That was sweet. I want to shout out to Mitch. He's a member of our private community. He'd be loving himself right now uh, because there is a very decent replication trade in Bitcoin. And I know he was frothing yesterday when, when it came to this trade. So congrats, Mitch, and anyone else that might have been a little bit bullish onto Bitcoin over the last 24 hours. We saw a significant shift of change, of course, a trend on Friday. Uh, that opened up the idea that pullbacks could be met by bull demand, and the market itself is trying to put pressure on this key resistance. Now, we've got this little red line here. This is kind of like the top end that I'd like to see broken. And if the market does react positively for Bitcoin, a lot of people are speculating it will be because they're saying, well, it should trade like gold or silver, therefore interest rate cut equals Bitcoin long kind of thing then we could be pushing into the 64 and a half, 65s fairly quickly, get through that 68.2 and get through 68.2. Well, that's when crypto bros will be smiley face and you guys will be absolutely celebrating because of course, that means you've broken this holding pattern that we've been in all of 2024. A fascinating time, a really important time for crypto and obviously a critical zone. Now, which bits will you need to be paying attention to? Well, of course, we're going to get our dot plot, I believe, and it will show, no doubt, less rate cuts on the horizon than the market expects. We will also get probably 25 basis points is probably my expectation. This may be changing, actually. Economists uh, overall saying towards the 50, I believe. And the FOMC press conference where Jerome Powell annoys us will be probably the one to watch. Now, it will reverse or do all sorts of things, so expect some volatility here. There are some dramatic implications to the overall curve when it comes to what interest rates are going to do next. So I'm super excited to do that with you over the next 24 hours. Make sure to sub, guys. What a time to be in markets. And of course, follow along. If you're interested in our newsletter, check it out. We've got a new one coming out, as I said, after the close. I've chosen to do it there because I think it's the most important. And then, of course, you can follow us along everywhere else. For the Australians out there, shout out Sydney, Open Reg. Make sure to click in the links. Melbourne, few more spots starting to really fill up. So if you want to join Melbourne, completely free trading event here in Australia. It's going to be awesome. Come join us. It's going to be great to meet you. And make sure you sign up for Melbourne relatively quickly because we're getting towards the numbers now. Uh, so that's awesome to see. All right, everyone. Thanks. Have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.